probably don't have a lot of cases where we can actually treat cats with periodontal disease. But this is an exception. So in a, a, a situation where we've got bone expansion that is not severe, like this case that I'm about to show you, we can do some things that with your skills in surgical extractions will eventually um, be able to, to comfortably do things like this. So you, you guys are doing really well and you've, you've developed a lot of skills over the last day and a half. You'll be able to take those same skills in the flap creation and do what I'm about to show you here uh, if you have an indication for it. This is not real common, but it occurs enough where you're going to see it, so this will be something that you can use. So um, this, this patient has uh, not on that side that gross of change. Uh, there's the, the pocketing there. Uh, if we took a periodontal probe and went down in, we'd have a three to four millimeter pocket there. And you can see there's a little bit of extrusion where we've got the neck of the tooth here and the gingival margins here. So you've got where that tooth has come out from the, the bone socket a little bit. And then we've also, on the other side, got it where it's more severe, same patient. So we've got um, essentially that vestibular bone expansion, but instead of being in the maxilla like it was yesterday, it's in the mandible. And radiographically, that's what it looks like with that exact same tooth. So you've got where, again, periodontal disease, one of the things we look for, increased periodontal ligament space. You can see that on that mesial aspect of that tooth, there's a huge periodontal ligament space there. And if you took your periodontal probe in there, that's where that pocket would, would uh, extend to is the base of that, that right down in this area where you have the base of where the lucency is. So with that, that's too severe. That's an extraction. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> On the other hand, we do have some patients that have it when it first starts happening, and this is one of those. So if you look there on that mesial aspect and a little bit on this side on, on, the, distal or on the distal aspect first and then the mesial aspect here by the incisor, you've got a little bit of pulling away of that bone from where it should be adjacent to that tooth. And if you find them at that level, a lot of times we can, we can treat those. So look at it, that view, you can see it's more significant, easily seen there versus the view before. But everything else looks pretty good. So if we can take and recreate that bone margin so that even though it's lower down or more apical on the tooth, and reposition the gum tissue on the new bone level, then we've got a chance to, to save that tooth with a fairly simple procedure. It's not, if you don't know surgical extractions and you're not good at extracting that mandibular canine tooth, you wouldn't want, you'd want to think about doing this procedure. But if you're reasonably good at, and comfortable with surgical extractions, you can definitely do this. So, this is what it looks like upon exposure. So all that dark material that's down in there, that's either necrotic cementum or calculus or otherwise some other debris. So part of cleaning that up is to do root planing. So we take our periodontal curette, clean that off. We could also use our ultrasonic scaler clean that off, make it nice and smooth, polish it, and then we're left with that ridge of bone that we want to take down and eliminate that cup. So this we want to make so that it's down at the base of that vertical defect and that we contour the bone from coronal to apical just like it would be normally. So there's uh, there again is the the area before we've done anything, there it's cleaned up and now we've got that bone where it's contoured. It's not straight across, it's contoured down or apical so that it recreates what normally would be there if the bone was at a normal bone level. 
So once that's all cleaned up, once the bone's contoured, then we can suture that back, and we just suture the gingiva down below that normal level. So it's not up against the neck of the tooth where it's supposed to be, it's down on the bone level, and what we're doing there is, it, the term is we're recreating uh, the biological width. So we're allowing for the normal pocket and attachment interface between the gum and the bone and the tooth to be recreated so that that can reattach and be normal uh, again once that heals. So looking at it from that view, uh, that's immediately post-op, there is, uh, there's a view of it before and after. So you can't really tell it that much there, but on the other view, you can definitely tell it. So there's before and there's after. So nice contour, back apically. We extracted those two incisors that were adjacent to the canines because those had enough bone loss to extract. And then again, there's before and there's after. So really nice, save that canine tooth. Of course, we're not over that, right? Owner's gonna have to come back periodically and get that evaluated. And now what we're gonna need to do is put this four-year-old cat on a regimen that is specific for him so that that doesn't start to progress again and other areas are not getting gingivitis and getting pocketing. So whether that's Four months, six months, ten months, a year, depends on our rechecks like we talked about yesterday. So any questions on that? Can you do it on the mandible as well? Or sorry, maxilla? A little bit more difficult there. Um, I've never seen a case that I could do it on that. And the reason is, usually it's not just that one little spot. It's all the way. It's all the way around. So very, uh, very unusual if you find a spot you could do it out there, but uh, you can, and there have been, have been cases that that's been done, and there's actually been a step-by-step -step published where it showed how to do it, and it was for the maxilla. Uh, I think that came out of Wisconsin. So it can be done, but um, not as common up there to be able to do it. Good question. All right, so in general, that's, that's perio. And um, back to, to Cherry's question, in periodontal disease, most of the time, in le unless we could have resolved that with your skills and that procedure, that's an extraction. Four-year-old cat with that much bone loss, there's nothing you can do to stop the pro progression uh, unless you get that guy in every couple every six months at minimum and clean that big lip out under the gum uh, and that's most people aren't going to do that right they're not going to come back to save that one too so that's going to be an extraction so that's kind of it's kind of either extract or save and there's not much in between and there's not a lot of chances to save <laughs> so that's for for perio for cats and dogs a totally different story